What up, y'all? It's your boy Shake, and I'm back with another video discussing AEW Fight Forever. In my previous video, I shared my opinions on what I believe are the game's biggest issues. One being THQ Nordic, Ukes, and AEW Games' lack of transparency about fixes, patches, and DLC after collecting people's hard-earned money. Now, a game launching with issues isn't a new occurrence. But what's most important is how a publisher or developer responds to the gaming community. I'm not sure what's going on with the game, but I do have a few suspicions. Warning, warning, what I'm gonna share is all speculation, so please take it with a grain of salt because I have no insider information whatsoever. Before I jump in, I want to refresh our memories a bit and share how a few game companies have dealt with rocky starts to their game releases. Star Wars Jedi Survivor released back on April 28th, and once EA became aware of the PC performance issues, they immediately took to Twitter and issued a statement. It read, We are aware that Star Wars Jedi Survivor isn't performing to our standards for a percentage of our PC players. While there is no single comprehensive solution for PC performance, the team has been working on fixes we believe will improve performance across a spectrum of configurations. We are committed to fixing these issues as soon as possible. Thanks for understanding and apologies to any of our players experiencing these issues. We will continue to monitor performance across all platforms and share update timings as soon as it is available. Again, this was EA's messaging the same day the game came out. We all remember the debacle that was Cyberpunk 2077's release. The game was dropped on December 10th, 2020, and by December 14th, CD Projekt Red had taken a Twitter and issued a statement. There's Red. First of all, we would like to start by apologizing to you for not showing the game on base last gen consoles before it premiered and, in consequence, not allowing you to make a more informed decision about your purchase. We should have paid more attention to making it play better on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Second, we will fix bugs and crashes and improve the overall experience. The first round of updates has just been released and the next one is coming within the next seven days. Expect more as we will update frequently whenever new improvements are ready. Although I don't own either game and I imagine I would have been livid had I purchased them in their launch dates, I have to commend EA and CD Projekt Red for addressing the issues with transparency, accountability, and a quick turnaround. This brings me back to AEW Fight Forever. As we know, the game has been riddled with issues from day one. The game released on June 29th, and the first real correspondence we got was a tweet on August 1st from AEW Games saying, AEW Fight Forever celebrated its one month launch anniversary last Saturday. On behalf of the team at AEW and THQ Nordic, we wanted to extend a thank you for playing to our passionate community. Your fun is our top priority and we're listening to all of the feedback you've provided. I don't want to sensationalize this tweet or make it more than it actually is. However, I was a bit pissed when it came across my timeline because it seems like marketing speak. It didn't address anything tangible and the community can't do anything with a thank you. I think we would have much preferred some accountability and honesty. I also think this makes Zaidi's job more challenging because all of the community's frustrations are directed towards them. I said it before and I'll say it again. Please, please be respectful. I don't know Zaidi from a hole in a wall, but I do know they're a human being doing a job. But back to this THQ, Nordic, Ukes, and AEW game situation. I'm beginning to suspect that there probably isn't the best partnership happening between THQ, Ukes, or some combination of the parties involved. The first red flag was the short window between the game's release date announcement and its actual release. It happened in the blink of an eye, and most games typically have firmer release dates that are shared in some cases months or even years before release. Fight Forever's release date was shared five weeks before launch. I'm also beginning to think that THQ may have strong-armed Ukes into releasing the game earlier than they anticipated. Warning, warning, 
Again, this is all speculation. But with THQ as the publisher, they probably had a rock solid release calendar planned. My rationale is based on the timing of it all. Being a few weeks removed, Fight Forever's June 29th release date starts to seem a little fishy to me. I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of some business talk, but bear with me because it all relates to Fight Forever. Companies schedule major projects, events, or game releases around their fiscal year, which is broken up into four quarters. For example, Nintendo's fiscal year ends on March 31st, so we'll often get big game releases before then. After doing some research, I discovered that the Embracer Group, who is THQ Nordic's parent company, has a fiscal year that starts on April 1st and ends on March 31st of the following year. This means that AEW Fight Forever released just days before the end of quarter one for THQ Nordic and Embracer Group's 2023-2024 fiscal year. Now it starts to make more sense why Fight Forever was potentially rushed out the door. Companies bank on certain revenue streams and it's completely plausible that AEW Fight Forever, as a licensed property, had to be released to ensure THQ's books looked solid going into quarter two. I could be wrong, but this strikes me as the most logical reason why we got the unpolished mess that was Fight Forever. I don't know where we go from here. Again, I've had fun with the game, but there's no denying it still needed more time in the oven. I hope we get the updates and patches we've been asking for. I hope we get clear communication about the season pass for folks who purchased the Elite Edition. But that's all I got for you. I'm interested to know what you guys think. Do you think my tinfoil hat theory has any validity? Please leave comments and remember, let's keep the convo productive, y'all. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Peace.